where does the word Catholic originate from? And was the early church Catholic? The word Catholic, derived via late Latin Catholicus from the Greek adjective Catholicos, means universal. It comes from the Greek phrase Catholu, which means on the whole, according to the whole, or in general, and is a combination of the Greek words kata, which means about, and holos, which means whole. The Greek roots of the word Catholic were used by the church and by St. Ignatius of Antioch, a disciple of St. John the Apostle, in his letter to the Smyrnians in 110 AD. It was also used in sacred scripture. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. Let us examine Acts 9.31 in English. It reads as follows. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. In the Greek translation, as it originally was written in, it reads, Ecclesia Catholos, Catholic Church. Ecclesia means church. In Latin, the word Catholic is also translated as universa, which can be read in the Holy Bible in Acts 5.11, universa ecclesia, universal church. At the time, it was used to refer to a single, visible communion, separate from others. Many people today believe the word Catholic is denominational, such as Lutheran, Presbyterian, or Baptist. It is, however, the exact opposite. It is universal. Matthew 28, 18-20 says, And Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus stated he would be with his church to the end of the age. There is only one church that traces back to Jesus, the Holy Catholic Church. People say that Roman Catholic contradicts being universal. But St. Peter, the first pope of the Catholic Church, ruled there and died there, along with all of the early church martyrs. We know he was martyred there, not from sacred scripture, but through sacred tradition. We see the church in Rome in 1 Peter 5.13 in Peter's letter where he says, The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so does Marcus my son. Peter was writing from Babylon, which is universally known as Rome. Rome is the Universal Church's headquarters, and still is to this day. All Catholic churches are in communion with Rome, and with each other, in one doctrine. God prophesies to Abraham that, through him, his children will expand beyond a tribe, a nation, even a kingdom. They will outnumber the stars in the sky. His descendants will be universal, Catholic in scope. Genesis 12, 2 through 3 says, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In Genesis 15, 5 through 6, it says, He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. In Revelation, John's vision of the people of God before the throne are universal, meaning from every tribe and every nation. Revelation 7, 9 says, After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hand. Only a few short years after Jesus instructed his church to go make disciples of all nations, it is recognized that this church was going throughout the world, spreading one universal doctrine, not multiple, one. Acts seventeen six reads, When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authorities, shouting, These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also. Since this was a universal church with a universal doctrine, Paul says in Ephesians 4, 5 through 6, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The first and only church Jesus founded was and is and will always be forever Catholic. 
Catholic describes the one body of Christian believers. There are not 45,000 different faiths just as there are 45,000 Protestant denominations where each person becomes their own pope deciding what doctrine they like best. There is only one faith. You could argue that Paul meant faith as in just faith in Jesus and the essentials, yet no churches can agree on what constitutes as essential and what needs to occur to be saved. Peter, the first pope, said in his letter, 2 Peter 1.20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, which means that we cannot decide what scripture means via our own private revelation or prophecy. There is only one way to interpret scripture, and there is only one body and one faith. 1 Timothy 3.15 says, If I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Not just any church can be that pillar and foundation of truth, or all churches would agree with one another, but the fact is is that they do not. And they are all only 500 or so years old and sprang from the Protestant Revolution of 1517. The Catholic Church is ancient. At Antioch, St. Ignatius was appointed as an authority by St. Paul, Apostle of Jesus Christ. At the end of the reign of Evodius, he was appointed Bishop of Antioch by St. Peter, the first Pope. He was the authority there for many years before his martyrdom in Rome. On his way to Rome to be martyred, he wrote a collection of letters to Christians in many locations elaborating on Christian theology. He emphasized unity among Christians. In one of his letters to the Christians in Smyrna, he wrote, See that you all follow the bishop, even as Jesus Christ does the Father, and the presbytery as you would the apostles, and reverence the deacons as being the institution of God. Let no man do anything connected with the church without the bishop. Let that be deemed a proper Eucharist, which is administered either by the bishop or by one to whom he has entrusted it. Wherever the bishop shall appear, there let the multitude of the people also be, even as wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. The Christians of Antioch were part of the Catholic Church. We should note that the first use of the word Catholic, other than in sacred scripture, was used by St. Ignatius in the same area where the first use of the word Christian derived. In Acts 11.26 it says, And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. They were the Christian disciples, but they were also Catholic. Given the unbroken chain of succession at Antioch, from Peter to Evodius to St. Ignatius, this is where we see the universal Catholic assembly. St. Ignatius commanded these Christians to follow the instructions of their bishop just as the universal assembly follows Christ. Disciples of Christ are Christians, and the universal assembly, the one body, is Catholic. Here are some quotes from the early church fathers from the first few centuries. And of the elect, he was one indeed, the wonderful martyr Polycarp, who in our days was an apostolic and prophetic teacher, bishop of the Catholic Church in Smyrna, for every word which came from his mouth was fulfilled and will be fulfilled. St. Polycarp was a disciple of St. John the Apostle. Fly to the Catholic Church. Adhere to the only faith which continues to exist from the beginning, that faith which was preached by Paul and is upheld by the chair of Peter, St. Hippolytus of Rome, disciple of St. Irenaeus, who discipled under St. Polycarp, who discipled under St. John the Apostle of Jesus Christ. Christian is my name, and Catholic my surname. The one designates me, while the other makes me specific. Thus am I attested and set apart. When we are called Catholics, it is by this appellation that our people are kept apart from any heretical name, St. Passion of Barcelona. In addition, though he writes twice to the Corinthians and Thessalonians for their correction, still it is apparent, by this sevenfold writing, that there is one church spread abroad throughout the whole world. John, too, in the Revelation, although he writes only to seven churches, yet addresses all— Paul wrote, besides these, one to Philemon, one to Titus, and two to Timothy, in simple personal affection and love indeed. Nonetheless, these are wholly in the esteem of the Catholic Universal Church and in the regulation of church discipline. There are also in circulation one to the Laodiceans and another to the Alexandrians, forged under the name of Paul and addressed against the heresy of Marcion. There are also several others which cannot be received into the Catholic Church, for it is not suitable for gall to be mingled with honey. 
the epistle of Jude, indeed, and two belonging to the above named John, or bearing the name of John, are reckoned among the Catholic epistles, along with the Book of Wisdom, written by the friends of Solomon in his honor.